What's up, everybody? Greg Ehrenberg here from Odd Shopper, and I'm about to break down my favorite markets to bet for football futures. So what we're going to break down here is how you guys can make some money using some of the stuff that I look at when it comes to futures, in particular, the ones that I like to look at the most, awards, MVP, Offensive Player of the Year, Rookie of the Year for the Offense, Comeback Player of the Year, and then also Team Futures, so stuff like Super Bowl winner, Division winners, stuff along those lines. Those are things I like to bet on. We also have tools for it over at Odd Shopper that are going to help you make some money because one thing that is really important when you're betting futures is to always make sure that you're betting the best available line, which we have here in Odd Shopper. If you're signing up for the first time, use the link below because it's going to get you 70% off the first month you sign up for. And one thing that is going to be important about betting the best line, especially over the long period of time, is why would you ever want to bet something like a plus 200 line when a plus 300 line is available somewhere else? And Odd Shopper is going to help you identify what the best line is. We've got all the futures markets loaded in here. So stuff like division winners, Super Bowl winners, offensive rookie of the year, defensive rookie of the year, any markets that you could think of, we have here in Odd Shopper. You get to select them and find the best available line. And as we get even closer to the NFL season, more lines are going to be posted at different books. So go check out Odd Shopper whenever you're going to be betting any kind of NFL future so you make sure that you get the best available line. So the first thing we're going to talk about here is the MVP, which is likely going to be a quarterback. If you look at the most recent winners of the award, all of them are quarterbacks. You actually have to go all the way back to 2012 to find Adrian Peterson as a running back who last won the award, who is not a quarterback. So that's going to be the most important thing to think about here is that if you're betting on an MVP, make it a quarterback because the most recent winners, Patrick Holmes, Aaron Rodgers, Lamar Jackson, all of these guys are quarterbacks. And I could say with a very, very high degree of likelihood, the winner in 2023 is also going to be a quarterback. It would take some sort of crazy outlandish performance for a position player to win. Even somebody like Cooper Cup, who had an outstanding year a couple of years ago, he didn't even sniff the MVP award. So don't even consider it. You want to be betting a quarterback and you also want to be betting quarterback from a team that is going to win. So something else you'll notice of the recent award winners, Patrick Holmes last year, Aaron Rodgers in 2021, Aaron Rodgers in 2020, 2019 was Lamar Jackson and 2018 was Patrick Mahomes again. It is not only quarterbacks, it's also quarterbacks that end up being on very successful teams that are both winners and are expected to be Super Bowl contenders. So for this year, think about guys like Patrick Mahomes, probably most likely to win. You're going to see him as being the favorite at pretty much every sports book right now. But then also other quarterbacks that are expected to have really big years like Josh Allen, like Lamar Jackson, like Jalen Hurts. These are the players you can really narrow down your MVP pool to. And then if you want to take a shot on a longer odds quarterback, here's what you want to look for. You want to look for a team that's maybe flying a little bit under the radar. Do you think has a chance to not only really outperform their preseason expectations, but also a team that's potentially going to do it with their air attack. So Tua Tugavailola, for instance, this year, he is somebody who I would look at as potentially being a longer odds QB who, if the Dolphins are really successful this year, which they were in the early going of last year before he got hurt, it's likely going to come from the passing attack because we know how the Dolphins run their offense and we know how many weapons Tua has in guys like Tyree Kill and Jalen Waddle. So if you're looking to bet MVP, look at quarterbacks and look at quarterbacks on successful teams. The next award I'm going to talk about here is the NFL Offensive Player of the Year Award, which here's how I like to think of this. It's like the fantasy player of the year award. So it's often given to a non-quarterback that puts up really big counting stats. So I like to think of this as like I said, a fantasy award or like who is the MVP of non-quarterbacks in the last three years. We saw Justin Jefferson win, Cooper Cup, Derrick Henry, and before that, Michael Thomas. The last time a QB won was in 2018, Patrick Mahomes. So if a QB has some sort of outlandish crazy performance where they are say like the number one overall scoring fantasy player by a really wide margin and maybe do something like challenge for the QB touchdown passing record you could see a quarterback win in that kind of scenario but here's generally how awards are breaking out in these recent years the best overall quarterback in the league wins the MVP award the best non-quarterback in the league ends up winning the offensive player of the year award so think like I said Justin Jefferson won last year He's going first in fantasy drafts this year. Cooper Cup won two years ago. He was going at the top of a lot of fantasy drafts last year. So think of it that way. 
Who do you think is going to be the player that you would select towards the top of fantasy leagues this year? Or who's somebody who you think could break out and be a top fantasy scorer this season? That's who you want to be betting on for the Offensive Player of the Year Award. The next award that I want to talk about with you guys is the Offensive Rookie of the Year Award. And this one has to do with opportunity more than anything because it is hard to win the Rookie of the Year if you're somebody who doesn't start the year in a prime role for your team. So last year, we saw Garrett Wilson win. The year before, it was Jamar Chase. Prior to that, Justin Herbert. Before that, it was Kyler Murray, followed by uh, Saquon Barkley for the Giants back in 2018. So this award opportunity is everything. It's generally going to lean a little bit more towards quarterbacks. So when you have a situation this year, like Anthony Richardson already confirmed the starting quarterback for the Colts. Bryce Young likely going to be starting for the Panthers to open up the season. Those kind of scenarios, you want to look at quarterbacks who have opportunity to really succeed or a pass catcher who's going to be playing with a really good quarterback that could rack up a lot of counting stats. Think like two years ago, Jamar Chase winning the award as a rookie wide receiver for the Bengals or a situation like a Saquon Barkley. Where can we expect a running back who's going to be a bell cow back right out of the gates? And we actually have a lot of potential offensive rookie of the year candidates this year. It's a loaded rookie class, especially when we're talking about canning stats. So I already mentioned a couple of quarterbacks that are going to be in the mix right away to start the season. But then as far as skill position players, Bijan Robinson, he's going in the first round of fantasy drafts this year. Jameer Gibbs, he is going in like the second, third round of fantasy drafts this year. So there's a lot of potential players that you could see winning the award. But like I said, you want to look at opportunity and really pay attention as we get closer to the season, what players' roles are expected to be coming out of the preseason games, which quarterbacks are locked into starting spots, and then also which skill position players look like they're heading towards a big role, getting a lot of target share if you're a wide receiver or getting a lot of touches as a running back. Those are the players who are most live to win the Offensive Rookie of the Year award. The market I want to talk about is team futures. So stuff like odds to win the Super Bowl, who's going to win the division, things along those lines. I really do like betting them. And the number one thing I like to look at for those odds are the DVOA numbers over at Football Outsiders. So they have projections for fair odds for teams to win the division, win the Super Bowl. And then what you could do with that information is look at some of the odds that are available here in odd chopper and find you know the best available odds for let's say the chiefs to win the super bowl and let's say the number would be plus 600 you go into the strategy guide here you're going to find something called the expected ev calculator and then what you want to do from this is select the odds converter and now you can go in here and like i said we're going to assume here just plus 600 something like that for the chiefs so when the chiefs have a plus 600 odds to win the Super Bowl at sports books. The implied odds here say that they have a 14.29% chance to win the Super Bowl. So then I'm going to compare it to some of the football outsiders DVOA data. And let's say that they had, and these are all, you know, make believe numbers, just doing this for example. Let's say they have the Chiefs with an 18% chance to win the Super Bowl. Since that's above a 14.29% chance, that would signify to me that this is a bet with value and it's something to consider. So that's generally what I'm doing whenever I'm looking at these futures markets. I'm looking at Odd Chopper. I'm trying to find what the best available line is for any team I might be interested in. I'm plugging it into a betting calculator like this. And then I'm going to see, do the odds outweigh the break-even point, which means they have to be longer than what the number is here. And if it is, you've got yourself a bet and a good money-making opportunity. And what you could do from there is you could just ride it out. Maybe later on in the year, you get to a spot where maybe the Chiefs make the Super Bowl and they're a minus three and a half point favorite. Well, you could bet against them at plus three and a half, set yourself up with a hedging opportunity where maybe the Chiefs win the game but they win it by only three points, then you'd cover the spread and the Chiefs would still win. Or you also get to a spot where maybe you have them at plus 600 in the Super Bowl, and then you bet the other side of the game, you're at least locking in some profit. So it's not always the correct idea to hedge, but there are times where maybe you stand to win a mass amount of money on a team and you just want to lock in some profit. That's the way you could also handle futures and make sure you're putting some money in your pocket. One other market that I want to talk about, comeback player of the year. And this is kind of an interesting one because it doesn't really have all that much to do with how players perform on the field. Don't get me wrong, it can matter in certain instances, but for the most part, this is a narrative award. It's which player has the overall best story. And the player who, for, for example, is really likely to win this year is DeMar Hamlin, right? Has a heart attack on the field last year. 
as long as he makes the Bills roster and plays this year, he's almost certainly going to win comeback player of the year. And that's usually what we see happen. The winner of this award is not who is better this year than they were last year. It's who has a great comeback story, right? Somebody has a horrific injury. They come back. They're able to overcome the odds and get back on the field. That's who's going to win comeback player of the year. So whenever you're looking to bet this market, look at narratives. Don't look at stats. Which player is the best story? That's probably who the voters are going to vote for. So that does it for us here, guys. Thank you very much for watching. We went through all different kinds of NFL futures, something that I love to bet. and going to start doing these for more sports as well, just kind of like a primer to help you guys make some money in these markets. But also keep in mind that you always want to make sure you're getting the best available number. And the easiest way to do that is to subscribe to Odd Shopper. And when you click on that link below, you're going to get 70% off the first time you sign up. So go ahead and do that. And when you're placing your futures bets, like I said, make sure you're getting the best number. Don't bet a plus 200 when there's a plus 300 available somewhere else. Good luck with all your bets, guys. And subscribe to our channel. Check out all the content we have here because we have everything covered for every single sport.